what we're going to talk about today is the five ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And many of these theorems that we're going to talk about should look familiar because they are converses of the properties of the parallelogram that we did yesterday. So the first one, and this first one, the definition of a parallelogram is the way that we can prove the other four ways. So you can show that if both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, by definition of a parallelogram, hence our quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The second way, show both pairs, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That's the converse of the property of parallelogram that we did yesterday. Three, this is different. This isn't a converse of what we did yesterday. This is showing that one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. So looking at a quadrilateral, if I can show that this side is congruent to that side and that is parallel to that, we can now say that that is a parallelogram. And we're going to prove that theorem on the next slide. Fourth, again, is a converse of what we talked about yesterday, showing that both pairs of opposite angles, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, showing the diagonals bisect each other. Again, a converse of what we talked about yesterday. So let's prove that third way, showing one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. So again, one of the things that I want you guys to be able to do before we leave this class is I want you to be able to look at an if-then statement, and I want you to be able to come up with a given, a proof, a picture, and a two-column proof. So if both pairs of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel, remember that if part is what we are given. So we have our quadrilateral, opposite sides are congruent. So let's say Wx is congruent to Zy. Wx is congruent to Zy. We could also prove Wz congruent to Xy, but I'm going to focus on Wx congruent to Zy. And we also are given that those segments are parallel that Wx is parallel to Zy. And we're trying to prove Wxyz is a parallelogram. And that symbol we can use for parallelogram. So first, as always, we start out with our given. Our next step, we're going to use the idea of congruent triangles to be able to prove that this figure is a parallelogram. We need to draw in an auxiliary line. We need to draw in the diagonal of z x. So our reason is going to be draw, I apologize, our statement is going to be draw z x our reason is going to be two points make one line again remember every statement has to be justified with a reason so now because i have parallel lines i know that angle one is congruent to angle two that is one of our special angle pairs Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because well, I have parallel lines. Those alternate interior angles are congruent. Now I have a side. I have an angle. I have a side. I have an angle. Well, Zx 
is common in both triangles. So Zx is congruent to Zx. The diagonal is congruent to itself by reflexive. So now I have triangle WXZ congruent to triangle YZX, and that is by side angle side. Next, I can say WZ is congruent to XY. By CPCTC. Lastly, that figure WXYZ is a parallelogram because opposite sides congruent give me a parallelogram. Again, remember that each one of these on the last slide, each one of these are reasons. So I didn't go through proving each one of these, but I can use this idea to prove another theorem. So let's do an example with one of these. What values must X and Y have to make that figure a parallelogram? Well, let's think about this. They give us our two diagonals. We know the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So if we set the two pieces of the diagonal equal, so 3x minus 40 equal to x. If I subtract x from both sides and add 40 to both sides, I get 2x equal to 40, I divide by 2, we get x equal to 20. y becomes a little bit more challenging. We have that y squared in there. So I know the two pieces are going to be equal, so I set them equal. With a quadratic, I have to get one side to be 0. So I subtract everything over to the y squared side. Now factor. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 30, but are going to be, add to be negative 1. Well, negative 6 and positive 5 are going to add to be negative 1. We're going to add, multiply to be negative 30, so y can be 6 and negative 5. Now do a check. Plug 6 in for both the values of y in the original picture. 6 doesn't make either, either segment negative. Negative 5. When I square negative 5, I get 25. Negative 5 plus 30, well, that equals 25. So both of those are possibilities. x equals 20 is our other one. Lastly, a paragraph proof on how to prove a different quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Remember, paragraph proofs, you don't need to state some obvious things. First of all, we are given that K, G, L, J is a parallelogram and F, K is equal to L, H. So I mark up that diagram. Now notice I'm trying to prove F, G, H, J is a parallelogram. G, J. It's a common diagonal, and FH is the diagonal of what we're trying to prove a parallelogram. The figure we're trying to prove is a parallelogram. So what we want to do is we want to show that those two diagonals bisect each other. So first, as always, we start out with the given. We are given. Parallelogram K. G, L, J, and F, K is equal to H, L. Since diagonals
of a parallelogram bisect each other. O is the mid point of both JG and KL. Now, JG is a common diagonal in both of the figures there. So keep that in mind. So because we know the midpoint sets two, sets two of these segments equal, so because of the definition of a midpoint, K O is equal to O L. Now, look at that. I have two pieces equal. I have K O equal to O L and F K equal to L H. By segment addition postulate, I can combine those two pieces and say that F O is congruent to O H by segment addition postulate. In a two column proof, that's gonna be about three or four steps. Remember with a paragraph proof, we can kind of look at the picture and don't have to state everything that's completely obvious. So since F O is congruent to O H by segment addition postulate, therefore O is the midpoint of F H because O is the midpoint of J G and F H. those segments bisect each other. Notice again that FH and JG are diagonals of what we're trying to prove is a parallelogram. So therefore, thus, we'll write thus, thus FG H J is a parallelogram because the diagonals bisect each other. Other. Okay. Again, when I did this as a two-column proof, in my notes I did this as a two-column proof, this worked out to be about a 10-step proof because when I was proving the segment addition postulate, I had a couple steps in there. Sometimes a paragraph proof is going to be a little bit shorter. There are your lesson questions. Complete the Google form with those lesson questions. And please make sure that is submitted by 8 a.m. on the due date.